Today I'm going to finish the lecture for week two. Uh, so I'm going to continue with uh, the distance formula, the slope formula, and get an equation of the line if I have given only two points. Pretty much that's what you're going to do today. Uh, so again, last time we talked about equation of line, we talked about slope intercept standard form, how to go from one form to another, what is the equation of horizontal equation of vertical line. We did that last time. We watched the video for uh, the slope. Uh, when you have increasing, decreasing horizontal and vertical line, what is the slope? Uh, we talk about that. We also talk about last time uh, how to find uh, x-intercept, y-intercept. Uh, x-intercept always the second number is zero. For the y-intercept, always the first number is zero. And we did that last time, we graph it, so everything should be good from last time. So now we continue with um, the distance. So today we're gonna cover distance formula and slope formula. We're gonna use these formulas today, and you're gonna also find equation of line. Depends what type of equation they're asking to find. Okay, so this is what you're going to finish today. So let's start with number eight. That's why we stopped last time. Uh, number eight, uh, they ask us to find the distance between two points. So if they ask me to find the distance, we're going to use the distance formula. And the distance formula is in the formula sheet, and this is the formula you're going to use. Now, if you notice in front, we have coordinates of two points given. So point P has coordinates X1, Y1, because always any point has coordinates X and Y. But because here we have two points, that's why we have this X1, Y1, and the second point has coordinates X2 and Y2. That's what these letters means, X1 and Y1. Okay, so we're going to name each number. They give us the number, and we're going to use the formula. This is the square root formula. So the distance, before I start using the formula, I have the first number is x, the second number is y for both of the points, right? But because there are two points, one of them is going to have coordinates x1, y1. The other point is going to have coordinate x to y2. Doesn't matter which one is the first one. Uh, I'm just going to stick with x1 and y1 is for p. x2 and y2 is for q. Doesn't matter. You can switch them. You're going to get the same distance. Because obviously the distance from p to q is the same like the distance from q to p, right? It's the same. And then I'm going to write the formula here and I'm going to plug it in. So the formula is square root x1 minus x2 square plus y1 minus y2 square. Okay, so this is the formula, and if you want, you can double check. x1 minus x2 plus, it's a square, okay? So this is the formula we're using, <clears throat> and then what you're doing, you're going to plug it in. So my distance here for these two points given is going to be in parentheses. X1, the number for X1 is 4, minus the number for X2 is 11, square, plus Y1 is 5, minus Y2 is 29. So just plug the numbers, square, and then... You can just put it exactly the way it is in the calculator. So I'm going to use symbol up. Let's do that. Symbol up, and I'm just going to put it exactly the way it is. So here we're going to click on the square root, and then you have parentheses. I don't remember. Let's see. 4 minus 11. 4 minus 11. Close the parentheses and then do the square and then plus parentheses 5 minus 29, I think. Let's see. 5 minus 29, that's good. And then you're going to do the square after you close the parentheses. So just enter it the way it is, nothing else. 
And then the calculator is going to give you what is the answer is 25. Okay. So the distance between these two points is 25. And that's all. So in here in my answer box, I'm just going to put 25. That's the distance. So it doesn't matter what you get. Make sure you check your numbers. Uh, you always, I'm saying name each number. So the number four is X1, the number five is Y1. And then follow the formula, plug it in, and then plug it in the calculator exactly the way it is with the square root. And then <clears throat> you're going to get the answer. Okay, any questions here? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Then you're going to the next one. Uh, which is number nine. And this one is a word problem, but we're going to use also linear equation in this in this word application. So you have a car, car is purchased for $28,130. It's expected to depreciate according to the formula. So here they give me the formula and it's a linear equation, right? Uh, so this f of x technically is the same like y. So next week, we're going to talk about functions, and we're going to use this notation next week. F of X means Y, okay? So technically, you have Y equals number X plus number. So this is pretty much equation of line, right? Slope intercept form, yes? <clears throat> so here we have, uh, the question is, after how many years the car will be worthless? Worthless means the value is zero, have no value, right? So <clears throat> the value of the car is the Y. So they're saying when Y is going to be zero. That's the question. So looking at my formula, the formula is instead of F of X, I'm going to use Y, which is the same. Negative 1940, 1940. 1940x to say it correct plus 28130 and they're asking when y is zero so you're going to solve you're going to replace y with zero and you're going to solve that equation okay pretty much that's what you need to do just solve that equation and how you solve it it's a linear equation that's what we did the whole last week. So we're going to solve negative 1940x plus 28130 equals 0. So we're going to move the number over in both sides. We're going to subtract 28130 and then you're going to get negative 1940x equals negative 28,130. And then the last step is divide by the number in front of X, which is negative 1,940 divided by negative in both sides, 1,940. And that will give me X equals, uh, here we divide in X uh, negative by negative. So we have to divide 28,130 divided by 1,940, and that's 14.5. So after 14, point, 14 and a half years, you're going to pay the car, and the, the value is going to be zero. Okay? So that's what you put there. Any questions? Let me know. So that f of x, is that always going to be y? f of x is y. That's correct, yes. We're going to talk about f of x more next week. This is a functional notation. So we're going to talk about functions. So next week, pretty much, you're going to bring the, uh, the level a little bit higher. So we're going to go to actual college algebra. We're going to go to higher level math. We're not going to have X and Y, we're going to have F of X, which is functions. So functions are pretty much like the numbers for higher level math. So when you go to calculus, if you go to 
um, fine art math, if you go to high level math, you're going to deal with functions. So higher level math work with functions. And the function is pretty much the translation between the real world problems to mm. math. Okay. So the functions are important to high level math. We're going to talk about that the whole next week. Okay. But f of x is the same like y. So stick with that right now. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So <clears throat> from here, we're going to continue the next question number 10. You know, the answer from the video we watched last, last class. So the slope of which line is zero? When was zero fun? Horizontal, diag diagonal, perpendicular, parallel, vertical. Which one? Hmm. Horizontal. Good job. Horizontal line has the slope zero. Okay. So that was number 10. <clears throat> then the next question we're going to do is going to be about the slope. And here we're going to use the slope formula to find the slope. So we have <clears throat> given two points, P and Q. And uh, if you have two points given, we don't have the line. We have to find the slope. So one way to find the slope is if you graph it and see how the line looks like and just find, figure it out. But if you have the two points given, you can just use the formula, okay? Okay, so here we're going to find the slope if you have given two points, point P, point Q. So looking at my formula sheet, the slope formula is right here. So the slope is given as y2 minus y1 x divided by x2 minus x1. And the slope is represent, the slope means rise over run. So if you have, I'm just going to explain this a little bit. So if I have a graph of a line, so I have x-axis, y-axis, and you have your line, let's say, I'm going to draw my line looking like this, increasing. So the slope is technically how you go from one point to another point, doesn't matter which two points you pick. So from this point to this point, I'm going to go this many units up. And then I'm going to go over. So this is the, the, how many steps you're going up is the rise. And how many steps you're going over is the run. Okay. So from point to point, you have rise over run. The ratio between them is going to give you the slope. So if you're going up, and to the right is going to be positive because looking at this going up to the y axis is going positive direction, right? This is positive. And the run is also looking at the x axis is positive direction. So when you get positive over positive number, the answer is positive. So the slope is going to be a positive number, right? So let me give you an example of if you have decreasing line, what's happened? So if I have line going down from point to point, let's say from this point to this point, uh, I need to go down and then I need to go over, right? So the rise in this case is going to be a negative because the y-axis, when you go down, it's negative, right? And then the run is going to be positive. So in this case, you have negative over positive, so that gives me a negative slope. Got it? And this also work for horizontal and vertical line. So let me just draw a picture of one of those. I have a little room here to draw another picture. So uh, let's say I have, sorry, here. So let's say I have my X and Y axis again, and I'm going to draw a horizontal line. So if I have horizontal line, again, from point to point, okay, you don't go up and down, right? So there is no rise. 
So the rise is going to be zero, right? And then the run, so this is the run. It could be positive or negative, depends if you're going from this point to this point or you're going from this point to this point, doesn't matter. So the rise is zero and the run can be positive or negative. I'm going to do this plus or minus, doesn't matter. So uh, if I do the, the ratio between them to find the swap, I'm going to have rise, which is zero over positive or negative, doesn't matter. So my answer, my swap is going to be zero. Everybody understand that? So when you have zero in the top of the fraction, it's going to be, answer is going to be zero. And then, like, I think I have enough room to put the other one, the, the next case, when you have a vertical line. So I'm going to draw a little vertical line here. So if I have vertical line, again, from point to point, this is your eyes, right? It could be positive or negative, right? You can go up or you can go down, depends. And then the run is going to be zero because you don't go, you don't go from this point to do this point, you're in the same level, right? For X. So when you make the ratio to find the swap, the rise over run, the rise could be positive or negative again, doesn't matter. So you have positive or negative divided by zero because the run is zero. So number over zero, it's undefined. You can divide by zero, remember? So that's why you have undefined swap if you have a vertical line. So the swap is undefined because you have number over zero and division by zero it's undefined if you remember from the restrictions, right? Okay, so this is the idea behind the swap. Okay, so if I have to find the swap, I have given two points, I'm just going to use this formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and it's going to give me what is exactly the number for the swap. Okay, any questions so far? So let's use the formula. <clears throat> so we have two points given. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to name each number. So they give me two numbers, two points. So first point is has coordinates X and Y. The second point has coordinates X and Y. But because there are two points, I'm going to name each number X1 and Y1 for the first point x2, y2 for the second point. Again, doesn't matter which one is your first and which one is your second. You can switch them, doesn't matter. So from here, we're going to plug it into the swap formula. I'm going to write it. The swap is equal y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is the formula, and I'm going to plug the numbers. So we have y2, which is 16, minus y1, which is 2, this 2, over x2 is 5, minus x1 is 2. And then if you want, you can do it in your head. This is easy math. Or if you want, you can put it in the calculator. So you can just put here, delete this, and put fraction. Okay, I'm going to do it. It's really easy to do it in your head. So 16 divided by 2 is 14, and 5 minus 2 is 3. So my swap is 14 over 3, and that's what you're going to put in the box. So I just put 14 slash 3. The swap is 14 over 3, which means the swap is a positive number. We have a raise, we have a, a rise over run, right? So we're going to go 4 up and 3 over to get to the next point. Make sense? Any questions? 
Okay, let's do it one more time. Let's do it one more time. So we have again two points given. Point P, point Q, we're going to name each number. So you have X1, Y1 is the first one, X2, and Y2 is the second. Oops. And then I'm going to use the same formula. So the swap is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And then plug it in. So we have y2 is 11 minus y1 is also 11 over x2 is 11 again minus x1 is 2. And then you're going to simplify 11 minus 11 is 0 over 11 minus 2 is 9. And we know if you have 0 in the top, the answer is 0. So the swap is 0. What type of line it is? It's a horizontal line. Okay, so that's how you do it. You just plug it in into the formula and voila, you got the swap. Okay, the swap is zero. Any questions so far? It's easier than last time, right? Okay, going to the next one then, number 13. Number 13, they asked me to find the swap. And we don't have given two points, so we're not using the formula. Let's see what we have. We have given equation of the line, right? Now, the equation have only x's. So what that tells me, remember from last time, if I have only x, what type of equation is that? Vertical line. It's a vertical line, thank you. So we have a vertical line. So looking at my equation, have only x there, okay? So technically the equation is only x, only with x. So that tells me it's a vertical line. Now, if it's vertical line, what is the slope for vertical line? If you're going down the cliff, what's happened? You're gonna curse, right? The curse word, undefined. Do you guys remember that? X is zero. X is zero. Okay, it's zero if it's horizontal. No, 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 X is not zero, hold on. The equation half, yes, thank you for bringing that, Amber, thank you. So let me explain. Here we have only x in the equation. So the equation is x minus 6 equals 0. Now, what is x equals? We, it's not solved. This is standard form. We have to move 6 over to get what is actually the equation. So x is going to be actual equals 6. So my equation is x equals 6. Okay? It's a vertical line. X equals A, it's a vertical line. And if you have a vertical line, what is the swap? Zero. No, for horizontal is zero. Remember the swap, swap there, dude? Yes, so if you go up the hill, puff, puff, positive swap. Oh, yeah. If you're going down the hill, nice negative, okay. If you have horizontal line, the swap is zero fun. And then falling down the cliff is going to be the curse word in math, undefined. Okay? Got it? Okay. So that's how you're going to remember this. So it's undefined. So what you're going to do here, you're going to type it in undefined. Okay? Everybody good? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you for bringing that because, uh, I mean, you have to kind of remember if it's horizontal, it's zero, if it's vertical, it's undefined, okay? Mm -hmm. So now, yes, let's go ahead and do number 14. Uh, number 14, again, they give me the equation, but here they'll ask me to find two points. Two points and also, and find the swap, okay? So here, 
<clears throat> they give me the equation and we have to find any two points. They didn't say which points, they say any two points, but actually they give me what is my X and I have to find Y. So they give me X is zero for the first point and X is one for the second point. So I have given X and you just have to plug it in. So following that equation, y equals 6x minus 8, I'm going to plug it in 0 for x. So it's going to be y equals 6 times my x is 0 minus 8. How I know it's 0? It's right here. Okay? 6 times 0, 0. So I get negative 8. So the, answer, the number for y is going to be negative 8. Okay? So... The first point is 0, negative 8. Let's do the next one. So the next point they're asking me to find, they give me y, I mean x equals 1. And how I know it's 1? It's right in here, right? So we're doing the same. We're going to follow the equation and we're going to replace x with 1. So you have y equals 6 times 1 minus 8. So what is that? 6 times 1 is 6 minus 8 is negative 2. So my second point is 1 and negative 2. Okay, now I'm going to ask you guys. Tell me, how are you going to find the swap? Y2 minus my 1 divided by X Okay. Two. Thank you, Brandon. That's one way. You can use the formula because you already find two points. So you can use, let's say this is P, this is Q, and use the formula. That's one way. There's a shortcut here. Can somebody see it? You can find the swap just looking at the problem. Okay, I guess nobody see the shortcut. So let me sh let me ask you questions and you'll see right away. Okay, we have given the equation y equals 6x minus 8, right? This is the equation given, right? Do you remember what is the equation of in swap intercept form? y equals mx plus b, right? That's the formula, yes? Mm -hmm. This is the swap intercept form. So, do you know where is the slope in this formula? And I can show you the formula sheet. It says it's right there. You see this? There you go. Good job. It's six. Good job. Good job, Ines and Laura. Yes. The slope is in front of X. So, if you have... So this is your swap. Okay, so looking at my formula, I can see that the number in front of X is six. That means my swap is also six. Okay, so you don't need to use the formula. Got it? But if you want, you can use the formula. That's okay. Any questions? Okay, next one is number 15. And number 15, they give us a graph and then ask, what is the swap? Is it positive, negative, zero, undefined? Any ideas? Is that negative? Okay, are you going down the cliff? Looks See the yeah. graph? I'm sorry? Is that negative? It looks like it. Okay, the, the line is, this is the line. So I going up, the, always going to the left. It's positive. Yes, that's correct, Jacob and Shana. It's going up, see, from left to right. Always you look the line from left to right. From left side to the right side, it's going up. Okay, so if you're going up, it's, Positive swap. That's correct. Okay. 
Okay, so that's all. You just have to find the swap. Okay, so let's do the next one. Uh, and we're going to do 16. We have a few more to go. Um, probably I'm going to take a little break after 16. Um, <clears throat> okay, 16. Uh, we have the price of computer is dropping. You know that, right? Um, for the past 10 years. <clears throat> so if the desktop piece, uh, personal computer costs 6,200 10 years ago, and the same, uh, the same computer cost $2,100 four years ago, find the rate of decrease per year. So here the question is, find the rate, the rate of change, increasing or decreasing, doesn't matter. So every time they're asking you find the rate of change, of decrease or increase, always the rate is associated with the swap. So if they're asking the rate of change, they're asking the swap, okay? The rates of increasing or decreasing, the rate, the word rate, that means how fast, how slow, is always associated with the swap of the line. Because here we have assumed that we have straight line model, right? This is what it says here. You have straight line, okay? Which means you have linear function, linear equation, okay? So, oh, this is moving. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. The rate. Okay, so how are we gonna find the swap? We have to, f to translate all these words and all these numbers to a math, to a point. So one of the point is we have 10 years, so we can just make your coordinates year, is your X and dollar amount is your Y. That's gonna give you coordinates of point, right? So <clears throat> first we have 10 years ago, the past 10 years ago. So the year is gonna be minus 10 because it's before 10 years, right? So now it's zero years, 10 years ago is minus 10. What is the price? 6,200, right? That's the price, the value. So that's my first point. And the second point given is four years ago. So minus four is the year and the value is 2,100. So these are the two points given. So we have point P, we have point Q given. And what you're doing to find the swap? Because the question is find the swap, find the rate. How are you gonna find the swap? Use that formula. Exactly. That's correct, Darius. You're going to use the formula. And before I use the formula, I'm going to name each number. So let's say this is x1, negative 10 is x1, this is y1. Then I have x2 is negative 4, and y2 is 2100. And then I'm just going to follow the formula. And the formula says m equals y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. That's my formula, and I'm going to plug the numbers. Okay, so plug it in. I have y2, which is 2,100 minus, the other one is 6,200, over x2 is negative 4, minus, now x1 is also negative, so I'm going to put it like this two negatives, gonna make a positive, right? And let's see. Now, if you want, you can put this in the calculator the way it is, or you can just do uh, 2100 minus 6200 is negative 4100 divided by, now here negative and negative make positive 10. So I have 10 minus four is six. And then when I divide by six, I'm gonna get negative. Um, here it says round to the nearest cent. So when I put this in the calculator, I get negative 
683. Repeating three, 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 three. So nearest cent means two decimal places. So I'm gonna stop at three, three. Okay, it doesn't say leave it as a fraction. It says leave it as a round to the nearest cent, which means round two decimal places. Okay, so if you get a repeating number, you have to go to the decimal pretty much and round to the nearest cent means two decimal. And always if you round to two decimal, that means go to the, four, to the third number and see if it's bigger than five, you round up. Yes, so that's my answer, negative 683.33. Okay, any questions here? So we're gonna continue with number 17, uh, which uh, asked me to find the equation of the line. And uh, all the rest of the questions here, they asked me to find equation of line and we have given different things. So for number 17, they give us uh, M and B. Number 18, they give me the swap and they give me one point. Uh, number 19, they give me the swap and the point also. Uh, for number 20, they give me two points only and we have to find equation. And number 21, it's another equation where you have to find uh, find equation. Uh, but it's a word problem. Okay, so all of these uh, problems left, we have to find the equation given two points or given swap and point or given M and B, which means the swap and the y-intercept. Now, what is important here, we're gonna always start with uh, Y equals MX plus B, that's where you're gonna start. That's the equation you're gonna start with. But we need to read what they want, how they want the answer. See here, number 17, it says, write the equation in swap intercept form. That means leave it like that. For number 18, it says written in standard form. So you have to read this. Number 19 is standard form. And standard form is X and Y are in the same side. And then see number 20 says in swap intercept form. So be careful with that because even if you get the equation and it's right, if it's not in that form, it's gonna say it's wrong, okay? So make sure you read this, how they want the answer, okay? So now let's see how we're gonna find the equation. So the first one, number 17, they're saying that M is six, B is negative six. So pretty much following the equation Y equals MX plus B, we're just gonna put the numbers there and that's all. So we have Y equals MX plus B is the way you're gonna start. And you're gonna replace M is six and B is negative six, and that's your answer. So the equation is gonna be Y equals six X. Now plus and minus is gonna be minus six. And this is what you're gonna enter. So I'm just gonna put it also here. Y equals six X minus six, that's it. And this is the swap intercept form, okay? That was 17, we're doing number 18 now. Number 18 is the same way. We're gonna start with the swap intercept form, but in the end you have to go to standard. So here we go. We're gonna start the, again, we have M given. So we're gonna have Y equals M, the swap is negative three X plus B. We don't know B, they didn't give us B. So first step is we have to find B, what is B? And you're gonna find B using the given point. So they give me point P, which has coordinate three and five. Always coordinates of the point are X and Y. So the first number is X, the second number is Y. So that's what you're using to find B. You're gonna plug it in Y, you're gonna plug it in X in that equation, and you're gonna find B, okay? So that's how you find the equation. So I'm gonna plug it in Y is three, from the point equals negative three, X is, what is X, 
uh, I'm sorry, I have it backwards. Why? Sorry. Why is five? So be careful. Y is five, X is three plus B. So careful here, Y is the second number, X is the first number. So can, they kind of switched. The first Y is five and X is three. And here we have to solve this to find B. How you solve it? You have five equals negative three times three is negative nine plus B. You're gonna move the nine over, so you're gonna add nine. And that will give me B equals uh, 14, right? And then if B is 14, you're going to plug it back into the equation. And the equation, we found B. So it's something like what we did in the question before. We have M, we have B. And the equation become Y equals negative 3X plus 14 because that's my B. Okay, now this is my equation of the line, but this is not in standard form. This is swap intercept, right? We have to find the standard form. How you find it? Standard form looks like X and Y in the same side. So we're just gonna move the X next to the Y. So I'm gonna add three X in both sides. And you're gonna get three X plus y equals 14. And this is my answer in standard form. Right? That's what they wanted to find, want us to find. And then you're just gonna put it there just exactly like that. 3x plus y equals 14. Okay? Any questions? Okay, going to number 19 then. Number 19, we have another question like that. They give me the swap and they give me the point upon one point. So here we have the swap is undefined. So what that means, if the swap is undefined, what type of line you have? Horizontal. If the swap is undefined, the curse word. What's happening if you have the curse word? Vertical, vertical falling down the cliff, yes. So I have vertical line. So if you have a vertical line, you can go back to your formula, I'm sorry, formula sheet so you can tell me what is the equation for vertical line? Here you go. X is equal A, this is A, X equals A, mm -hmm. okay? So uh, the equation of vertical line is X equals A. So, uh, yes, question? No, I was just asking, are we recording? So I can yes. again later? Okay. Yes, yes, I will record and you can see this later. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so um, X equals A is gonna be the equation. Now, what is A? We don't have A given, but we can look at the point and remember the point always X and Y. So the first number is X, the second number is Y. So what is the X? X is given. Negative five, right? That's correct. So we have the equation become X equals negative five. That's the equation. And you get the negative five from the given point. X is negative five, that's my X, okay? So that's how you get the equation of vertical line. You're gonna be X equals, and you get the X from the point, negative five, okay? Now, here I'm gonna ask you something else. What's happen if they didn't say the slope is 75, if they say the slope is zero? So if the slope is zero, then we're going to have a horizontal line and the equation of horizontal line is going to be y equals number and you're going to get the number from the point okay okay james is asking if there is no x in the equation then it's automatically undefined Okay, no, James, it's backwards. So if 
it's only x so if there is no y if there is only x it's undefined it's vertical okay so if there is no welcome so if there is no y it's a vertical if there is no x it's a horizontal okay okay and if you're not sure always look at the formula sheet okay if you're not sure if it's x or y look here so if it's vertical the equation is x equals number there is no y oops i was gonna write no y so if there is if it's vertical x equals number that means no y and if it's horizontal y equals so there is no x in that equation okay that's how you remember okay so um let's go back to uh here everybody understand number 19 so if the slope is zero or if the slope is undefined you have horizontal or vertical depends what you have okay then you're going to number 20 where we have given only two points and we have to find the equation of the line so how you do that we're gonna start with the slope because the slope is not given so first i'm gonna find the slope using the slope formula okay so let's find the slope so using the slope formula we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and i'm gonna name each number first so we're gonna start with point p has coordinates x and y and this is the first point that's why i'm gonna put the ones here and the second is x2 and y2 and then i'm going to plug the numbers into the formula so we have y2 is negative 7 minus y1 is 0 over x2 is 4 minus x1 is 3 and when i simplify that it's going to be negative 7 over 1 which is negative 7. So my slope is negative 7. Okay? And then you're going to do pretty much the same way we did with number 18. We have the slope, and here we have actually two points. So you can use one of those points. Okay? So we're going to start with y equals mx plus b. And you're going to plug it in the numbers. Now let me move that marker here. So we're starting with y equals mx plus b. And you're going to plug it in everything we have. So we have y equals negative 7x plus b. Because we don't know b, we're going to find b here, right? And you're going to find B using X and Y from one of the points. Doesn't matter. So you can use P. I'm going to use the point P. P has coordinates 3 and 0, right? This is X. This is Y. Plug it in. So Y is 0 equals negative 7 and X is 3 plus B. And negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. I'm going to add 21 to move it over. And I'm going to get B equals 21. Okay? So B equals 21. So I'm going to rewrite the equation. I'm going to put that B back here. It's going to give me Y equals negative 7X plus 21. Now, let's go back and check what they want. They want the answer in slope intercept. And this is exactly slope intercept, right? So we don't have to move it to standards. We don't have to move X next to Y. And this is going to be my final answer. Okay. Any questions on this? 
Say that one more time, just for clarification. Yes. So here we have a little more steps. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so I'm going to start with, um, we have given two points. So from the two points, I'm going to find the slope first. So first, I'm using the slope formula. Okay, so that's my first step. I'm using the slope formula to find, I'm going to write it like step one, step two. Okay, so step one is doing the slope, finding the slope. And I have the slope is negative seven, right? Then second step is I'm going to use this equation to find the B. So I'm plugging in the slope and I need to find B. How I find B? I'm using the X and Y from one of the points. So the X is three, the Y is zero. And I'm plugging it into this equation Y equals negative seven X plus B. And I'm solving and I'm finding B. So that's my second step. After I find my B, I'm gonna put that back into the equation. So that's step three. Putting back B into the equation. And that's how I get Y equals negative seven X plus 21. And then step four is check how they want the answer. Is that my answer? Yes, because my answer is in slope intercept and they want the answer in slope intercept form. Okay? You got it? Now, if they want it in standard, I have to move X next to the Y. Okay? Yeah. Any question? Yes? I'm sorry, what did you say? I said I got it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so any questions? Everybody good with this? This is a little long process. We have to find the slope first, then I have to find the B, and then I have to plug it back to find the equation, and then I have to check if that if they want slope intercept or they want standard form. Okay, so that's how you do this one. And then we have the last question. It's a word problem where we have to find the equation which converts speed from miles per hour to uh, speed in feet per minute. So this is what you have. So this is gonna be something like the one, let me show you which one, we just did one like that where uh, like number, oops, number 16. This was 16, okay. Uh, looks like my numbers are kind of going off. Okay, so number 16, where you have, we have to get, um, we have to get coordinates. So you have X is going to be represented by something and Y is going to be represented with something. So from the given information, we're going to find X and Y. We're going to have two points. Okay, so here we have... Uh, a speed of one mile per hour. So the first one is going to be. So actually they tell me what is X. Speed X. So X is going to be mile per hour. That's what is given. That's my X. It says here. And the Y is going to be the speed fit per minute, right? So they tell me what is X, what is Y. So we're going to just read the question, a speed of one mile per hour. So I'm going to put one mile per hour, one for X, is equal to 88 feet per minute. So it's going to be 88 here. Okay. Then uh, they say also, of course, zero miles per hour is zero. So the second point is going to be zero and zero. So this is how we get the two points and we have to find the equation. And we have to do the same we did with the question before. So we have two points given with X, Y, X, Y, both of the points are like that. And then 
you're going to find the swap. We're going to go through the four steps again. Okay. So this is what problem, which technically it's the same like the one before. First, you need to find the swap. Then you have to find the equation. And then you have to see how to leave the answer because it says, um, so here pretty much leave it as standard form. Uh, leave it as a swap intercept form. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So first I'm gonna do the swap. So I'm writing the formula for the swap, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So before I plug it in the numbers, okay, that's swap. Yes, I'm saying it a little, okay, thank you. So finding the swap using the formula, I need to name each number. So here we have, this is X1 and this is Y1. And then we have the zero, zero is gonna be X2 and Y2. And you're gonna plug it in. So we have, y2 is 0 minus y1 is 88 and for x you have 0 minus 1 and then when you simplify you're going to get negative 88 over negative 1 again negative negative give me positive 88 so that's my swap m is 88 so that's my step one then i need to go ahead and do the step two the one, the same way we did before, the question above. Okay, so the equation you're going to start is y equals mx plus b. And you're going to plug it in what you have. So here I'm going to find b. That's the question, find b. So I'm going to use one of the points. Probably I'm going to use 0, 0. It's easier because using always 0, 0, it's easier. Small numbers. So y is 0 equals m, the slope was 88 is m, x is also 0 plus b. So 88 times 0 is 0, so we get b equals 0. So after you find b, we're going to go to the third step, so plug it in. So step 3 is going to be plugged in 0 in the place of b. So we're going to have y equals 88x plus 0. Now, we don't have to put plus 0. So just write the answer is going to be y equals 88x. And this is the formula how to change miles per hour to feet per minute. Okay, and that's my answer. Any questions? What would happen if you reversed, like say you did the second to the numbers first? Uh, if I do uh, X, which one? For the swap or for the, for the finding B? Finding B. Finding B, yes. Thank you for asking that, yes, yes. So what's happened if you use uh, the first point instead of the second point, it's going to get the same B. It's going to be the same. So let me show you. So let's say instead of 0, 0, I'm going to use, thank you for asking, that's a good question. If I use 1 and 88, okay? So I'm going to use different color and just solve that over here. So what's happened if I use, uh, let's use what color? Let's use orange. Okay, so what's happened if I use 1 and 88. So I have y equals um, 88 is my swap, x plus b. So instead of 0, 0, I'm going to use 1 and 88. So let's do that. y is 88 equals 88 times x is 1 plus b, right? 88 times 1 is 88. So I have to subtract 88 to move it over. This cancel and this give me zero equals B. You're still gonna get the same B, okay? 
Good question. Anything else? Okay, so this is uh, the end of the lesson for Thursday. Um, if you have questions, let me know.